I'm Richard Baranek. I'm a professor at Rice University and I work on the area of compressive sampling and machine learning. Compressive sampling is a new way to think about acquiring digital data. So if you think uh, everyone carries around these days a digital data acquisition device in their pocket, it's the camera and their cell phone. And the, the mathematics that, that, that makes those cameras work was developed over the last uh, 50 years or so and it's called uh, Shannon's Sampling Theorem. And what mathematicians have, have realized just over the last even less than a decade is that that mathematics can be significantly improved which can allow us to build new kinds of cameras that are even smaller, that take less power and that allow us to view uh, in, in wavelength bands that have been heretofore either very expensive or impossible. Mathematicians and engineers have figured out in just the last uh, uh, decade or so is that the, the standard way that we have thought in the past about sampling, namely uh, sampling at a, at, a, at, a, at a rate or a density that, that is commensurate with the Fourier bandwidth of the signal or the, the resolution of the signal is overkill in a lot of applications. In particular, in a lot of uh, sensing applications, the, the bandwidth might be large, but there's only a, a few small uh, components within that bandwidth that, that carry, the, carry the real information. And so by designing sampling schemes that just go after those uh, uh, isolated or sparse components, rather than try to acquire the entire bandwidth, we can either greatly reduce the sampling rate or greatly reduce the sample uh, complexity. Seven years ago, uh, Kevin Kelly and I at, at Rice were uh, bothered by the problems of uh, building cameras for outside of the visible uh, spectrum. So if you want to build a camera uh, for visible light, we have this incredible uh, coincidence that we can use silicon as a sensor because silicon just happens to be sensitive to the same wavelength uh, of light as our, as our human eyes are. And, and that means that we can use all of the standard sort of process technologies that we use to make microchips and memories and just apply those directly to cameras. The problem is once you move outside of the visible wavelengths, uh, silicon is blind in, in those uh, wavelength bands. So for example, the infrared, uh, far out into the ultraviolet. So if you want to build cameras in those wavelength uh, uh, areas, uh, your $100 uh, digital camera quickly becomes a $100,000 digital camera. And so what we realized is that, is that this theory of compressive sampling gave us an opportunity to try to build really inexpensive cameras for the, these, these more exotic wavelength bands by using the compressive sampling technology to reduce the total number of detectors that we need and that would decrease in the cost. So we're, we're very excited that this technology has been spun out from Rice to a company called InView who today are building uh, really inexpensive high performance uh, shortwave infrared cameras that allow us to see in, in, uh, in, in entirely new ways. So there are a lot of emerging applications for compressive sampling. So we're in the infrared space. Uh, infrared cameras are used for all kinds of different non-destructive evaluation, surveillance, uh, airborne sensing, maritime sensing, uh, because they can do things like see through different kinds of packaging, see through clouds, see through fog. Uh, so that's a very interesting set of applications. Another really, I think, exciting area is, is medical technology, where now you're talking about reducing the, com the, the complexity of sensing such that in spending, instead of having to spend 20 minutes inside an MRI machine, you might be able to get the same quality of imagery just spending five minutes inside the machine. And that's gonna, that comes at a huge, uh, 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 benefit to, to humankind for anyone who's ever uh, had an MRI done. We've really just scratched the surface of research and development in this compressive sampling world and, and people are just trying or just understanding now the challenges associated with uh, how noise in signals actually manifests itself through the process of, of compressive sampling and then recovery. Uh, 
we've also just recently realized that there are potentially some very significant dynamic range gains that you can get from compressive sampling. And so all of those, uh, these two trade-offs give us a very interesting trade space for designing new interesting kinds of, of sensors. I think another really important challenge in the compressive sensing area is developing better models for signals. Because really what compressive sensing is about is, is exploiting more powerful signal models that allow us to sample at a lower rate. And, and a particularly challenging area is uh, video sensing. Videos can very rapidly generate billions of, uh, billions of measurements. If you think of uh, you know, an hour long megapixel video, that, that, that's a massive, massive amount of data generated. And so that's, that's uh, that's prompting us to develop new breed of, of models for encoding video data and then algorithms for being able to extract uh, videos out of compressive measurements. And it's really pushing us in some entirely new directions as far as both theory and, and algorithms.